Hey Cyber Hornets, today we're going to learn a little bit about encryption and how you can personally encrypt and decrypt messages. In my last video, we played a little game where you could win some free Bitcoin. All you had to do was guess a 24 word seed phrase that I randomly generated. I encrypted it and put it in the comments section of the video right away so everybody could see the text. And of course, nobody was able to decrypt it and get all 24 words right. It just goes to show you the power of encryption. So I'm gonna tell you what encryption is and how you can use it to protect your sensitive data, or you can send anybody you want a message that only that person will be able to read. All right, first let's cover the basics of encryption. What is encryption, you might ask? Encryption is the process of scrambling text into an unreadable format called cipher text that only the person with the private key can decrypt and read the message. So why is encryption important, you might ask? Well, encryption protects your sensitive data. As you know, in today's internet age, your data is being exchanged behind your back without your consent or knowledge. Governments and big corporations are also notorious for monitoring all of your communications and your data as well. And privacy is a fundamental human right and encryption allows you to take your privacy back. Not taking your privacy seriously is just like smoking, excessive drinking, or excessive eating. The immediate effects aren't very noticeable, but long-term, you're risking a lot of negative consequences. So it is very important to take your privacy seriously, and encryption is one way to do it. You guys are already here, so you're on the right path. So how does encryption work? Well, with encryption, you generate a key pair, and it's called a pair because there's two keys, a public key and a private key. Now, the public key, as its name suggests, is a key that you can release to the public. And what the public key allows anyone to do is to encrypt a message or any kind of data and send it to you. Now, your private key is something, just as its name suggests, you should keep private and to yourself because it is the key that unlocks those encrypted messages so that only you can read them. Now, anybody that intercepts those messages in the middle will we'll just see a bunch of garbled text. They won't know what exactly the message is or what the data is. So let's say you want to send me a message and you don't want anybody else to see. Well, you would need my public key. And think of a public key as like a padlock that only the private key can unlock. So basically you're taking data and you're putting it in a box and locking it with this impenetrable padlock. Now, anybody that takes the box and tries to open it, they, they won't see, they won't know what, what is in the box. It is unbreakable without the private key. Now me holding the private key, I can unlock it, decrypt it and see what the message is. And that's essentially how it works. If this already seems super complicated, don't worry. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys some simple tools that you can use. It uses encryption in the background to protect your data and your privacy. All right, now that you guys know about the basics of encryption, we are gonna go and show you exactly how to encrypt a, a message and how to decrypt a message, including the 24 words from the last video. Let's do it. All right, guys, welcome to the Cypher Hive. We're going to show you how to encrypt and decrypt messages. Uh, this is a Windows machine. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to a browser and type in GPG for Win. It's right there. And this is for Windows. If you're operating under Linux or under Mac, uh, there's a different way to do this. And I'll link a video for that in the description below, but you're gonna to wanna to download the latest package here. Now it is freeware, but they do, um, it is recommended to send them a donation if, if you like the software. Look at that, you can even send them Bitcoin. But if you don't wanna pay anything, you just hit zero and click download. And uh, I already downloaded it here, I'll overwrite it. And there we go, we'll hit install. All right, guys, so Cleopatra is the program that we're going to be using. 
So you're not going to need any of this other stuff. I mean, if you want it, that's fine. But Cleopatra is everything that we're going to need to manage your keys and to encrypt and decrypt messages. So we'll do that. We'll let it install. All right, guys, when you're done installing uh, GPG for win, you should have a shortcut on your desktop called Cleopatra. If not, just type in Cleopatra here with a K. Open it up. You sh this window should pop up. If not, um, it's probably down. It'll probably pop up down here. And then you just double click this little redhead icon here. Now, this is your key manager. So all of these are public keys. Every single one that is not bold. This one that is bold is both a public and private key. So it's a key pair here. And this is mine, essentially. Now, as you can see, the, there's expiration dates on some of these keys. So like this one, Samurai Wallet, it expired on August 22nd of 2020. So this key can no longer be used to send a message. Uh, but all of these are public keys that I have imported. If you want to find somebody that has their public key on a server somewhere, let's look up Samurai. You can search anybody's name here. It'll search the uh, MIT server and pull up anybody that's registered their public keys on there. And here you go. So these are the public keys that it found. This one doesn't have an expiration date. So if we wanted to import it, we could just hit import. And this is just asking um, to, to certify it. I'm not going to do that. There you go. It just added this new key here. So now I could send them a message. But I'm just going to show you right now how to send an encrypted message. So what you're going to want to do is open up a notepad. And I use Notepad++. You could just use Notepad or any text editor and basically write a message. And we're going to just say CypherHive. CypherHive is awesome. All right, so let's encrypt that. So there's two ways to do it. I can either save this as a, as a text file, and we'll put it on the desktop, and just call it ch, and click Save, and it's right there. Another way is you can just copy your text and hit copy here. Go down to the taskbar down here with the little red head icon, right click it. And there's an option called clipboard. And you can click encrypt down here. And now it's going to show you a blank box with add recipient. So you're going to hit add recipient. And then you're going to find the public key of the person uh, in the list that you want to send it to. So if I wanted to send it to uh, Christopher, I'd hit OK. Hit Next. It says encryption succeeded, and the box disappears. And you're like, what the heck? Well, here, you just put it, open up a new text file, and then we'll paste. So this is this text right here, encrypted specifically for Christopher Attender. And only he will be able to decrypt this. So I can't even decrypt it like um, if, if I wanted to. I know what the message is, but I, I don't have the private key, so I can't actually reverse this and turn it back into what it was before. Only this person can do that. So now I can send this to, that, to Christopher in an email, and he will be the only person that will be able to decrypt it and read what the message is. Everybody else will just see this jumbled text, and they won't know what it is. So let's, uh, let's do that, except let's, let's send one to ourselves. So we'll do the same message. We'll copy it. We'll do clipboard, encrypt. We'll send it to 100 subs, which is bold. It's my private key here. We'll hit next. Encryption succeeded. OK. Open up a new file. And this is my encrypted text. So basically, if, if you were trying to send me this message, this is how it would look. 
And then you would copy and paste this, send it to me in an email, and only I would be able to, to decrypt it. And so I, what I would do is I would, I would just copy this to the clipboard and then put clipboard here, decrypt. It says decryption succeeded. I'll open up a new text file and paste. There it is. Same exact message. Pretty cool, huh? So that's just the first way to do it. The other way, we'll close both of these out. The other way to encrypt this, as you remember, we saved this as a file, ch.txt, here on the desktop. And basically, I will just click Sign Encrypt, click that text file. And here it gives you a little bit more options. So this one, I can sign it with my own private key, and I can encrypt it for me and for other people. So if maybe I want to be able to uh, decrypt it, but I also want Samurai to be able to decrypt it. I could also add another person. Let's add COVID. And then it will save it as a new file. So I'll just click Sign Encrypt, click Finish, and there it is. So now you can just send this file to uh, any of those people and they will be able to decrypt it. And if we open it, this is what the text looks like. But what's cool is, if you remember when I did that, I also said it that I could decrypt it as well. So let's go ahead and try decrypting it. So what we wanna go here is decrypt the file. We'll click that, open that. And it said valid signature by 100 subs. And it says output folder. So this is where it's going to go. Let's just do slash one just to, so it doesn't overwrite any of these files. It'll create a new folder here. And here is the encrypted text, th.txt. And there it is. CypherHive is awesome. So that's another way to do it. If you prefer to work with files or if you prefer to work with the clipboard, you can do it down here. Obviously, when you start out, you don't have a, a private key. If you want to create your own private key, you're going to hit new key pair and just type whatever name you want here. Call it Cypher Hive. Great. There we go. Click finish. There's another private key that I just created. So now if I want someone to send me an encrypted message, all I have to do is click export. And this will export the public key. I'll just export it to the desktop. Save. And here it is. We'll open it with Notepad. And there's the public key. So basically, when you generate a key pair, you can export it. And you can copy your public key and paste it in the website that you own or, or in the bottom of your email or whatever you want to do. And anybody that has this will be able to send you an encrypted message that only you can decrypt. Now I'm going to show you how to decrypt the 24 words from our last contest. So I'm going to actually just delete this private key here because I released it in the comments after the after the section was over and I'll I will actually show you how to import that. So yep, I'm going to delete it. There we go. Now it's gone. I don't have it anymore. But no worries, guys. We're going to go to my YouTube channel here. Go to my last video. And right here, I put my private key with the password so that anybody can decrypt this. So password's 100. And basically, we're just going to copy this text here. Control C, and we're going to paste it into a new text file. We need to add the dashes here, dash, dash, one dash, one dash, because whatever for whatever reason, YouTube likes to do that. We'll save it as 
100 private key on the desktop and we'll put dot ASC. There we go. And now we can import from the desktop 100 private key, click open. There it is, 100 subs, yes, imported, sweet. So now, if you guys follow that step, you'll see in bold text, 100 subs. Now you have a copy of that private key that I used. And with that, you can decrypt the 24 words that I posted here in the comments. So here it is, my encrypted 24 words. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna put a new file here, paste it. And remember, YouTube, for whatever reason, takes out the first dash and the last dash and lines out the whole message. So we need to put those dashes back in. One dash there, one dash, one dash, and one dash. All right, now we'll copy this. We can go down here, clipboard, decrypt. Open up a new text file, paste. Look at that. There it is, guys. There's my 24 words from this contest that we did. So you guys could personally verify if you won or if you didn't win. So thank you all for participating in this. This was a fun little game. That's how you guys do it. So I posted my 24 encrypted words as soon as I released the video. Then I posted the private key uh, after the contest was over so that you all could do this. And now you guys know how you can send uh, encrypted messages to other people and how you can receive encrypted messages. Glad you joined us. I know that's it's uh, a little bit complicated and some of you guys are probably, your heads are spinning or whatever, but um, all of this process happens in the background in, in a lot of modern apps today. This is just how to do encryption manually. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about some of those super easy apps that you can use to protect yourself that don't require all of this work. First of all, internet security. When you want to browse the internet, you want your internet traffic to be encrypted so that your internet service provider isn't logging everything that you're doing. So a VPN is great for that. I know there's a lot of VPNs out there. Another option is Tor, which stands for the onion routing. That is actually free. Tor is a lot slower than a VPN, but either way guys, uh, using a VPN or using Tor is great, especially when you're on a public Wi-Fi network. I never connect to a public Wi-Fi network without using a VPN because otherwise a hacker can get into your phone or get into your computer and cause all sorts of mayhem and steal a bunch of data. So if you ever connect to a public Wi-Fi, always use a VPN, but I would just always use one regardless. If you wanna send text messages or communicate with people in general, a lot of that's connected, collected by phone providers, by the NSA, by all sorts of entities. A good way around that is to use an app called Signal. Signal uses end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, they are automatically generate the private and public keys behind the scenes. You don't have to do anything. It's basically just a messenger app where anybody that is messaging signal to signal, it will be encrypted. So if, you're, if you get signal, make sure to get your other friends and anybody you talk to, try to get them on signal as well. It's open source. It's a great program. As for email, one of them I like a lot is ProtonMail. They offer encrypted email. Uh, it's very similar to Signal. In order for it to be encrypted, the other user also has to be running ProtonMail. It is free to use. They do offer, give you a free email account. When you're browsing the internet, another thing to look for before you enter your sensitive data is the little padlock that you'll see up by the address bar. And that little padlock means that your connection to the website is encrypted using SSL and that any sensitive information you pass through, like credit card information or personal information, will be encrypted uh, into the website server. Now, it doesn't mean that the website server won't get hacked. You still have to be very careful with your private data. And last but not least, guys, of course, 
The freest money in the world, the most secure money in the world is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin uses encryption to secure the network. Security is like an onion. So the more layers you add, the more protection you'll have. Um, I know it's difficult, but just add one layer at a time. Maybe start with a VPN or Tor and then move, move on up or start with, start with Signal. It's really easy to use, but just keep adding those layers and be more careful with your data, guys. And if you want to send encrypted messages, now you know how to do it and nobody else will be able to read it. And so feel free to play around, create your own private and public keys, send out the public keys to people and have them encrypt messages and send it to you. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys learned a lot and this helped any of you who are curious about encryption and about securing your own sensitive data. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button for me, hit that like button, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.